Hello and welcome back to chapter 9. Today we're going to look at section 9.4 and that deals with mathematical induction. Now before we get started, um, mathematical induction is actually a form of a mathematical proof. Um, when dealing with these series and sequences, um, just because we have found that a rule, pattern, or formula appears to work for a few and sometimes even several um, values, we still have to prove um, that these formulas are going to work for every case. Um, because if you recall from geometry when you dealt with proofs, it only takes one instance um, to prove that something is not true to make the whole formula or whole pattern invalid. So here in 9.4 we're going to actually show you how to prove mathematically through induction um, that a rule, pattern, or formula is actually a legitimate uh, case. Now, in order to prove that a statement is uh, an actual formula or pattern or rule um, through induction, we have to show that both parts of what we call the principle of mathematical induction are true. If the first part isn't true, we don't even need to go on to the second part because we know that the second part isn't going to hold true. And likewise, if the first part's true but we find something isn't true in the second part, then that means that we're, we're done right then and there. Now the principle of mathematical induction says that if p sub n is a statement involving a positive integer n, we have to prove 1 that the first term p sub 1 is true. And if that holds true, then for every positive integer k, then we have to find p sub k plus 1. And if you remember, p sub k plus 1, this is really like the next term. And I know this may be um, a little bit confusing right now, but we'll do enough examples um, to where it should be clear. So let's look at example one that says find the statement p sub k plus 1 for each statement p sub k. Well, in this case, p sub k is given to me. p sub k for part a is 6 divided by k times a quantity of k plus 3. Now, if I want to find the p sub k plus 1, so p sub k plus 1 is equal to, remember, this right here tells me I have to plug in a k plus 1 for every k in my original equation. So when I do that, I go 6 divided by, and for this k, I'm going to plug in a k plus 1, and I am going to group it with parentheses. And then for this k here, I'm also going to plug in a k plus 1. So I have k plus 1 plus that 3 that's still um, inside of that set of parentheses. So when I simplify, I end up with 6 divided by the quantity of k plus 1 times the quantity of k plus 4. And you can leave your answer in this format right here. Now for part b, my piece of k is given as an s sub k. Now an s sub k is really a summation and it's given to you in this equation 2 plus 5 plus 8 and so on all the way up to this formula right here that's being used. And the process isn't any different than it was in part a. Okay, Wherever I have a k, um, I'm going to plug in that k plus 1. So here I'm going to go s sub k plus 1 is really equal to, and I'm going to leave that 2 plus the 5 plus the 8 all alone, plus, and now I'm going to go 3 times a quantity. I have a k right here, so I'm going to plug in my k plus 1, and I have to subtract 1 then, and complete that bracket, which is minus 2, close your bracket, plus, now I have 3, and I'm going to plug in a k plus 1 for the original k, and I'm still going to subtract 2 and close that bracket. Now I'm going to go through and simplify this. So to simplify this, I'm left with 2 plus 5 plus 8 plus everything in between all the way up to, I see that I have a k plus 1 minus 1 is going to cancel out, so I'm left with just 3k minus 2 inside of the brackets, and then I'm going to add, well this right over here, this is really going to give me 3k plus 3 
and then I have to still subtract that 2. So now I'm left with 3k plus 1. So this right here then would be my final answer for my piece of k plus 1. To continue on with example 1, part C, we're still going to do the same thing. For p sub k, we're going to go ahead, oops, I'm sorry, that should be k plus 1. So for p sub k plus 1, I'm going to still go ahead and replace my k values with a k plus 1. And in this case, I still have plus 4 is less than 6. Now when I plug in my k plus 1, I have to put this in parentheses now because I'm squaring it. So it's k plus 1, and I'm going to square that quantity. So off to the side here, I know that k plus 1 squared, or that quantity squared, is really going to give me k squared plus 2k plus 1, and I'm going to have to multiply that by 6. So I end up with 1 plus 4, which is 5. So k plus 5 is going to be less than 6k squared plus 12k plus 6. And finally, for part D, if I want to find p sub k plus 1, I have 4 raised to the power of k plus 1 is greater than or equal to 3 times k plus 1 plus 1. And again, I'm just going to simplify. Um, let me slide this up here. So my 4 to the power of k plus 1 is going to stay the same, is greater than or equal to. This is going to give me 3k plus 3 plus 1. So when I simplify that, I end up with 3k plus 4. And here is my final answer. Now when we're proving summations, okay, we want to think of that term s sub k plus 1 as your previous term, s sub k, plus the next term. Okay, and we've kind of been doing this when we've been doing our um, arithmetic series and sequences where we've talked about this, and we'll talk about this more when we meet um, again. So this a sub k plus 1 is your k plus 1 term. Now for example 2, we want to prove that the sum of 5 plus 7 plus 9, plus 11, plus 13, plus 3 plus 2n is equal to n times the quantity of n plus 4. To do this, we're going to use the principle of mathematical induction approach. Okay, And if you recall, we have to start out with step 1. And step 1 said that we had to prove that p sub 1 was true. Now p sub 1 means I'm going to plug a 1 in for every n over on this side. So, so I end up with 1, oops, let me change my pen here, 1 times 1 plus 4. Now 1 plus 4 is 5 times 1 is 5. So I just have to verify that p sub 1 on this side is going to give me the same thing as my first term here. And in this case, it works. So I can say one is, or step one has been proven. Now I have to go to, into the proof portion, which is part two. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to treat the sum, which is given up here, as S sub K. So because I'm actually adding all of those terms. So I'm going to say S sub K is equal to 5 plus 7 plus 9, plus 11, plus 13, plus, and then I'm going to end up with a quantity of 3 plus, and I'm going to change all of my n's over right now to k values. So 2k, which equals k times k plus 4. My next step then is to show that when I plug a k plus 1 term in, over on this side, that it's going to be equal to my k or s sub k plus 1 on this side here, because s sub k is equal to 
all of this right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace um, this whole side. I'm going to do my S sub K plus 1. So S sub K plus 1 is going to equal 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11 plus 13 plus now, in order to do my k plus 1 term, I have to include s sub k first. So I have to include this 3 plus 2k, but then I have to include the next term as well. So then I'm going to go plus, and this is all dealing with this term right here, 3 plus 2 times a quantity of k plus 1. and that's going to equal, and we'll simplify that here in just a second. So what I found is that this whole piece right here is really equal to my original function s sub k. So because all of this down here is equal to this up here, I can actually just call all of this S sub K. So, and the reason I want to do that is because it makes it a little bit um, easier to write. So now I can just say that S sub K is equal, or I'm sorry, S sub K plus whatever I have left right here, which is going to be 3 plus 2K plus 2, or 2K plus 5. Now I'm going to also continue on, and I'm going to take this piece right here and plug in my k plus 1 as well. So I'm going to say k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 4. So that when I simplify everything, I end up with s of k plus 2k plus 5 is equal to k plus 1 times k plus 5. So now I'm essentially proving that these two, um, this equation is equal to this equation. Now to do that, I have to look back up here and originally, and let me change colors here, um, originally we said that s sub k, so this s sub k, equals this value. So I am now going to call s sub k here, this s sub k that's up here. So s sub k then is really k times k plus 4, and I'm adding that to 2k plus 5, and if we've done this correctly, it should equal the product of k plus 1 times k plus 5. So let's go ahead and prove that this does work. So now it's a simplification game. k times k plus 4 gives me oops, k squared plus 4k plus 2k plus 5 which equals k squared plus 6k plus 5. So now if I simplify, I see over here that I have k squared plus 6k equals 5, I'm sorry, plus 5 is equal to this value here. So because these two are both equal, I can say that I have proved that this formula works, and we will do more examples together in class.